Hi guys, I'm showing you a little before and after before I get into my introduction. This is what we're dealing with and this is what we're going to transform into today. So let me just show you how bad it is right now. These are my eyes. Look how dry they are. My actual eyeballs also are really suffering at the minute and I just look like an apocalyptic zombie. <laughs> Um, this is the worst it's been in three years around this area. It's spread up into my forehead as well. I suffer from psoriasis on and off. I'm sure I'll explain that in this video. This is just a bit of an intro to show you just how hard it is to get makeup to sit on top of this horrible scabbiness that we're dealing with at the minute. It's so dry, it's so wrinkly, and as you can see, I'm not having a very good time. So, I won't lie, I am actually quite devastated that I'm having to make this video because for the longest time, my skin was probably the best it's ever been. Um, so throughout this video, you'll see still clips of the way it is right now, and you'll be able to see right now just how bad it is. I think last night when I filmed a little snippet because it was particularly bad, um... It may be worse, but actually my neck is worse this morning because I've been scratching through the night. So it's currently half past six in the morning. So usually when I wake up, my eyes are quite puffy, um, as are my lips, as are everything on my face because it's the morning. I've got a little black Americano here and I've just whitened my teeth, so no doubt my teeth will start to look like they've been uh, stained with the Americano, so I do apologise. It always stands out more when I've not got any tan on and last night I decided just to just scrub my skin basically until it was raw, until all my tan was gone so you could kind of see the psoriasis and the eczema in its full glory. I'm a Slytherin, not a Hufflepuff. Um, we're just repping the Hufflepuff house colours today. So, first of all, when my, my face is like this, I have to do a, a little bit of prep. And what I would like to say at the start of this video is these are not um, cures, obviously, because I'm sitting here in the midst of an outbreak. And these products are just things that I found that help. Also, I just recently dyed my hair, so my hairline's a little bit jacked up because obviously I dye my hair black. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that as well. First of all, what I usually have to do is I have to go in with this big bad boy, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, good old fashioned pseudo cream. Now, pseudo cream actually says on the, the tin that it's good for nappy rash, eczema, surface wounds, sunburn, minor burns, acne, bed sores, chill blains. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like... I just put this on because I'm told that this is what I should put on it and before anyone comments saying oh have you been to your doctor I mean look at this stuff it's so white have you been to your doctor I've been to the doctors on and off about psoriasis and eczema uh, and contact dermatitis because god knows I have all three um on and off since I was 16 um I haven't had it my whole life basically it started when I was 16 I was in quite a horrible relationship when I was younger and I honestly still think that that was the set off of it. Um, when I first discovered it, it spread in between my legs. So like not on my, what will we call that for this video? Because I might have to touch on it a little bit. Not touch it, but touch on it. Nin or froof or... My lady garden. <laughs> so it wasn't on my lady garden. It was like in between spread right up my thighs. And it was horrifically um, sore and itchy. And obviously in between your thighs if you're wearing like tight jeans and stuff. It's not fun to have an outbreak there. If anyone's ever had like chafing or any sort of irritation on your skin in between your thighs. You'll know yourself. It is not fun. So it started then and then throughout the years and if you have psoriasis, um, more so psoriasis, you'll know yourself that it comes in cycles. So for example, when I was about 19, 20, I started working for Urban Decay uh, in Glasgow City Centre in Boots. And basically the whole time I worked there, so I worked there for like a year and a half and the whole time I worked there, 
on my forearm, basically from my elbow to my wrist, was one large dark patch of psoriasis. And I remember just thinking to myself at the time, this is never going to go away, I'm always going to have this. But it does go away and that's the weird thing about psoriasis for me. It just, it travels all over my body. Like you can see all these patches on my head, never had it there before, this is a new thing. Um, it travels all over my body. And actually the longest standing patch that I have right now is the one on my neck. The one on my neck I've currently had for two years. How weird is that? So for two years, I've been itching my neck like mad. So when I go to sleep at night, sometimes I'll just sit and like scratch, 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 scratch. And it does get itchier at night. I don't know why, but it does. Um, when you're like, like for example, I can't wear pyjamas to bed because they, they irritate me. I honestly have to sleep butt naked because I just need the cotton sheets and I have to buy quite high cotton sheets as well so they don't irritate my skin. I mean that stuff is so thick and white but it is antiseptic and if I have been scratching and something's sore it does help to heal it. So I can't wear I can't wear pyjamas at night time and um, so yeah when I was 19 I had that patch on my arm and then I started working for Urban Decay in Debenhams in Glasgow City Centre and I'll never forget starting there and I had big welts of it all over my neck and chest. And I remember, at the time, I was like, I mean you know what you're like when you're younger, you're so like body conscious, image conscious. I'm actually just going to now with my Dior eye cream, this actually is so good and helps just soothe it and calm it down a little bit. Fragrance free as well. It's the to capture total. It doesn't seem to irritate it. It actually soothes it and softens it. So, and that's another thing. Products are such trial and error with it, and I get so many recommendations that I run out and buy, and then they just don't work for me. Anyway, I remember still being very like I'm. I'm still wearing fake tan. Like I, there's no way I can go out the house. I mean, to be to be like in your early twenties in Scotland at the time. Nobody would be seen dead without fake tan on. And um, of course what happened was, if you can look at my psoriasis right now against my pale skin because I have no tan on, it, it just looks quite red. But of course when you put fake tan over this, what happens is, is it goes into very dark brown patches because the tan just sticks to it. So I remember I would always put tan on but then have these big brown welts. The the internal dilemma catch 22 was you could be tanned and scabby or pale and red. And I went for tanned and scabby. So um that that's what I done and I never forget one of the first days of starting that job in Debenhams. I was waiting for my induction, like my store induction. And I was sitting with like all these other girls who were starting in the beauty department. Now at the time I was very like girly. I had kind of became, I had like kind of left my rocker ways behind me and I was now like very kind of girly. And I never forget at the time these other girls that were starting in the beauty department who were like maybe at ages with me or just slightly older were looking at me like this. And I was like, Oh, they're going to say something about my neck. I just know that they're actually physically going to come to me and say something about my neck. First of all, if you see something on somebody's body, they probably know that it's there. There's no need for you to point it out or even talk about it unless you're a close friend. Second of all, I just think to go up and approach somebody and that to be your first opening line like I'm gonna hold that memory for a long time I don't know if you've realized this about me but I do hold grudges for quite a long time I know I need to get over it but um <laughs> what I was gonna say yeah so I could see them looking at my neck and, I, and instantly they came over what's wrong with your neck is that is those love bites is that love bites that you have and I was just mortified because I thought I'd done quite a good job in covering it with like SD Lauder double wear and uh, like maxi cover I used to use maxi cover on it as well which made it just look really blue so that always stick stuck out to me as a memory um, I'm actually just going to go in with the Kiehl's ultra facial right now I actually thought it was a Kiehl's eye cream that had started this um, it still probably could have been but um I actually now just think the change in the time of year 
but I'm, I'm staying away from that Kiehl's eye cream just in case but actually ultra facial cream if you want to strip back your skincare if you get it on your face the way I do um, stripping back your skincare is a really good idea because obviously I can't use any acid peels just now I can't use anything that could irritate the psoriasis further so yeah so avoiding like stuff like that stuff with acids in it is obviously a, a big um, adv advisation recommendation <laughs> what? Um, so basically the makeup I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you what I do when it's particularly bad um, I'm going to put on the Stay Naked foundation it's a foundation that just works well with me it stays for a long time um, the only thing is is it is um, a little bit more matte than maybe a lot of you that have drier skin would prefer and to be honest I don't mix it with anything when my psoriasis is like this because I need it to cover and I don't want to dilute it so I don't even wear a primer I let the ultra facial do the priming for me um, also a recommendation would be is I definitely recommend using a beauty blender when you've got eczema and psoriasis on your face simply because I, one make sure you sterilize them because you could actually if there's any openness to it you really need to make sure that you're not pushing bacteria into it because it, it can become infected I've had some pretty nasty infections um, in legs before and I'm just so cautious about that so my beauty blenders not only get properly cleaned with soap and water but I actually let them sit in surgical spirits sometimes as well so this is my personal beauty blender I don't ever use this in anyone else obviously um, and yeah stay naked foundation and the reason for the beauty blender um, is that brushes as you're buffing can upset as horrible as it sounds flakes and if you've got things like that for example this eye has a bit of a hole and an open sore in it just now so if I started using loads of um, foundation brush what am I talking about? If I started putting a heavy foundation brush over that eye, it would really upset it even more. So I just think by I've got I've got this jumpsuit on and it's like so fluffy and all the black fluff is on my face. Oh god. If you see black fluff on my face then I'm sorry. So today what I'm doing is I have a whole day of press appointments today so I'm really doing my makeup for that and that's why it's so early. And what's quite hard for me and affects me quite a lot as well is because my job is basically putting makeup on every day, this is where my mental health, and I don't ever talk about mental health, but this is where my not even mental health but I suppose it is a little bit but it's more so my self-confidence takes a knock and if I don't feel and I'm sure there's a lot of, of you out there that can relate if I don't feel that I look good my mood is horrific I am one of those girls that before a night out or before like a date with my boyfriend if I can't find something to wear that makes me look good or if my makeup isn't going right or my hair isn't going right I do start to get very temperamental and I'm, I'm not even lying I, I've had some pretty horrific meltdowns in hotel rooms in front of my boyfriend because a dress hasn't fit or if we're on holiday and I just feel like I don't look good like sometimes I wonder like he must just think get us out of this hotel room until she and do you know what this all plays into it like if my skin is not good and I'm having to constantly go on and do like a million makeups or I'm having to take up close pictures of my makeup for social media um it's really horrible if you think because obviously as a makeup artist I want people to think I'm good at makeup or I, I would like people to know that I'm good at makeup and sometimes in the world that we are in in 2020 obviously your own face is your your biggest canvas that you work on the most uh, especially for Instagram and if I'm not happy or if I'm in the midst of a breakout my blending is not going to be good I touched on it on my last um, YouTube video 
But my blending is not going to be good because as you can see, even with the makeup on, how crepey and dry and crunchy this is. You can't blend on that. It's absolutely horrendous actually. This video is going to be long, I can tell. So when I'm doing the foundation for this or to hide it, I actually think keeping quite a dewy, soft base is the best, guys, because just think about like putting a lot of powder on, obviously it starts to, to crack and it starts to cling to any of the bits of psoriasis that are on show. And if you look, the Stay Naked foundation actually covers the redness very well. I wouldn't recommend the likes of Double Wear. I wouldn't recommend um, Huda Beauty's foundation. Like anything that's really heavy and matte, you want to avoid it. You need something with a little bit of fluidity to it and a little bit moisturising. Stay Naked Foundation is a little bit more matter, but you can still create a very dewy base with it when you um, sheer it out. And I actually have to change my makeup. Wait for it 10 times today. I think 10 or, or, or 8, which is not going to be good for my eyes, but I have to do it because it's my job. But um, So I need to... I need to keep it something that's easy to change. Now I'm also going to use a Stay Naked Concealer because of its correcting properties um, and it basically just takes any discoloration away from my under eye and I put quite a bit on because I really don't want that redness to show through even though I know that it will cling to the dryness. I just want to make sure my under eye looks bright and not red. Just almost kind of melt it into the skin with the beauty blender. Now I said during this video I wanted to talk about all the products that I found uh, really helped me. Um, so I also said I'm going to touch on my other things that are really bad. So the other things that are really bad for me um, are my scalp and also in between my legs. So what did we decide we were going to call it? It's not on my noon. Noon, is that a good word? But all up the inside of my thighs, all in between my thighs as they meet my hips. Is that the right way to describe it? And it's different there. It's, look, what you'll find with psoriasis is, is places that are really exposed to a lot of oxygen, um, like my face, will be very dry and flaky and the skin is processing the cells. Because basically that's what psoriasis is, your skin is processing too many cells and that's when you get the dry skin and it starts to flake. Um, but when it's in an area, I find that when it's in an area that isn't exposed to daylight or sun a lot or oxygen, because obviously my inner thigh is not, it, um, it just goes into big red sores. And boy, are they itchy because if you think about it, it's skin on skin. So, oh my god, it is unbelievably itchy. I spend all my night, like, I've actually, I wake myself up most nights from scratching. That's how bad it is. And um, I try and keep down there as dry and as fresh as possible. For example, if I was to lather all the insides of my thighs with Suda Cream, which sometimes I do do and just sit for a while, but... If I was to do that all the time and walk about, the wetness of the cream would actually make it worse for me and more itchy and I'd end up scratching it more. So I try and just leave it as, as horrible as it is. And all, as I touched on at the start of the video, uh, none of the creams that the doctors prescribe work on me. In fact, they burn, they itch, I hate them all. Double base, Deprive, you name it, can't stand them, won't touch them. To highlight today, I'm using a powder highlighter. Am I? Yes, I am. I'm using a powder highlighter and I'm actually going to use the Urban Decay Single Shadow in the shade X. When you highlight, when you've got this, you have to keep the highlighter quite sheer. So as you can see, I'm just applying like a touch. And basically, liquid highlight would be better if you particularly had it up and around here. I've only got a wee bit and I like this highlighter. <laughs> so I'll pop it on the high points but don't apply too much. Bronzer today I'm using the Fenty Beauty Bajan Gael bronzer with my large peaches and cream brush. Now yeah so I was going to talk about my uh, 
scalp as well so I do get it really bad on my scalp and what my biggest worry with the psoriasis is, is that I lose my hair because I know people who physically have lost like a full head of hair from psoriasis and what I've actually developed and I, I don't know if it's through psoriasis or if it's a nervous thing but I basically if I had any sort of psoriasis sores in my scalp I'd go looking for them with my hands and in turn what that has meant is I also go looking for uh, any hairs that feel different to my normal hair. So for example if I got like a little crinkly hair I want to pull it out and in turn what's happened because of that and I think it is honestly because of the psoriasis. I really hope this video <laughs> flows well. I feel like this is why I don't do like sit down talk ones because I feel like they take ages. For my cheeks, I'm going to use a cream blush. I'm going to use Glossy Cloud Paint. I love this. This is the shade Puff. I love that name. Um, and again, just creamier, like more seamless products are better if you are getting dryness. And I have open pores in my uh, centre of my face anyway, so I find that this, this is gorgeous. I just take it on the tip of my beauty blender and pat, 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 pat it in. And it's just a gorgeous wash of colour. It doesn't have to be anything heavy or a lot and it doesn't lift. That's what I love about it. I find so many cream blush products lift your foundation. Um, but this, no, it's gorgeous. So my scalp, as I was saying, I started to pull my hair out and I do worry that I, I have had hair loss, not only from extensions and stuff throughout the year and weaves, but I do worry that my psoriasis is at play when I, I think that my, my hair is looking like thinner at the sides. So I just wanted to show you while well, I'm here two bottles of shampoo that I swear by. And they are both by Kerastase. And it's the Specific Ben Ricci Dermocalm Sensitive Soothing for Sensitive Scalp Shampoo. This one's amazing. Sensitive Scalp for Combination Hair. This is a cleansing one. So actually the difference is, is I tend to use this one daily and then if I've had like a lot of hairspray and stuff in this one really deep cleans your hair. That little flush of pink is so nice just to tie this all together and give it a little bit of a feminine fresh feel. <laughs> Sounds like an advert for a panty liner. A feminine fresh feel. No, a feminine makeup fresh feel. Right, brows, I keep them quite soft these days. Especially for a makeup like this. And you've seen me do this before. But I'm taking my um, double down brow by Urban. So like this. <laughs> like this. Uh, the reason for that is because when I'm doing a softer makeup look and it's fast and I have to interchange it quite a lot. I don't like big sculpted brows. I like this to be a very soft like beauty look and when you're using a fluffy brush to put a background, I mean it's got two shades, you can see I love this product. You're just almost creating like a background colour to the brow and then you'll like go background colour to the brow and then you'll like go in and define the hairs if you need to. Like instantly look at that. It's just a bit darker but you can see my natural hair and I actually think my brows I mean, I've been doing some work on them. I've been leaving them alone. I haven't put a razor near them in a long time. They have tails. And I think I could go as far as saying I have a decent natural brow now. I tint them quite a lot as well. So I just push the colour into the background. And luckily I don't have any issues with my brows with psoriasis. I've never had anything break out in there. My eyelashes, on the other hand they are non-existent because of psoriasis at the minute. This whole eye has basically lost right up until here. Which you'll see when I come to put my mascara on and that's why the mascara that I use and the steps that I do with mascara are so important. Look at that, it's like an instant brow but it's so natural, I love it. Brow Endowed, we actually just recently discontinued this so thaws if you like it but um I just, I, I, I found the primer side of it I never ever used, but I like the micro fine, um, like, colour. You can still get this on the website, I'm sure, so if, you, if you're desperate for it, I'll link it below, because I'm sure you can still get it. 
Okay, I'm just, um, I'll go in with a little bit of eyeshadow primer just because it's, um, it will help just keep what I need to keep on all day. I'll probably just be removing one eye at a time when I'm doing these appointments. So I just pop it on and obviously this is where all my outbreak is. So I try just to pat it with my finger. So yeah, so let's use the Nude 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 palette by Beauty Bay. This is, these are so good for the money, like honestly. Start with the colour Bare Necessity. I like the mirror on this as well. Like I don't know how Beauty Bay, Beauty Bay? I don't know how Beauty Bay churn out these palettes for so cheap. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, well, why the hell are you putting eyeshadow on top of your eyes when they are so infected? Not infected, but like broke out. And you'll see instantly how hard it is to blend. I mean, it's pretty challenging. Um, and the simple answer to that question is that I have to because it's my job. And unfortunately, with something like this, I can't just stop. I have in the past. And unfortunately as well, it's quite detrimental to my my performance online, which again is part of my job. It's pretty upsetting, and I'm sure I've probably already kind of touched on this, but it's pretty upsetting. And I've got another video coming that I've been planning to do for a while about social media and like the uprise and growing up online. But it's pretty upsetting when you went from being known as somebody that had like really high blending skills. Like I look back at my old pictures from social media and think to myself, how did I do that? Because my eyes have changed so much via texture and shape. And I just don't have this big, beautiful, smooth bit that I have any, any more than I used to have when I was like 24, 25. At the grand old age of 30 now and with these like ongoing eye problems this is just where we're at and yeah it makes me feel like shit because if you if you could imagine you're known for being like the best at something and then you lose the ability to do that and it's not even that other people are up and coming and better than you because that doesn't bother me at all but it's more so like I know that I used to be able to churn out a certain level on myself. I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't affect my blending on other people. But myself, I used to have these big, beautiful, seamless looks. And as I said at the, the beginning of this video, my face is the canvas I probably use the most. What I'm going to do for the lid is just take that shade Delicate, which is a matte cream white. And just almost mattify down the eye. And that means if I add anything else onto it today... I've already got this like soft little moment on the go. Right, I'm taking the shade Hot Cocoa, which is this brown one. Oh my God, the cat's frightened me there. I thought someone was coming around the front door. And what I'm gonna do is just lightly sketch the powder across my lash line. Because if I'm honest, the lash line is where gets this the worst. And basically I've just created like this smoky lash. This is a very natural look. But actually it doesn't cling to the dryness which is quite nice. And the brush that I'm using to do this is the Urban Decay um, Precision Liner Brush. It's actually so good. Right, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some mascara on. So as I said to you, my lashes are pretty much non-existent at the minute. So in order to amp them up, I always use my Kevin Aucoin Lash Curlers. These, without a doubt for me, are the best eyelash curlers I've ever used. Um, you can heat them up if you want. Uh, just because my eyes are so sensitive, I tend not to. Um, when, they, when they're having a bit of an outbreak because what I don't need is burns on top of scabs. <laughs> so I just give them a really good hold. You can pump them if you want, like move the fingers backwards and forwards. But um, 
these are the best eyelash curlers I've ever used and I've used a fair few instantly they just make them look better uh, and I actually can see what I'm doing when I use a, an eyelash curler I'm going to use Lash Freak, it really is the best for me and if you have smaller lashes, maybe you've lost some as well, uh, this mascara just gives everything that you've got a good coat. So I'm actually going to try and do a bit more of a natural mascara application. I want them to look like real lashes instead of building it up to like quite a, a full lash. I want to keep it quite uh, soft and defined. The reason being for that is if I'm taking my makeup on and off, I don't want to have like loads of mascara. So actually, that's probably good. And this is the eye that really is struggling and has not a lot to work with. So actually, Lash Freak is brilliant because of this wand. When I turn it on its head, it catches these little hairs that I didn't even know I had. So for my lips I'm using my go-to Urban Decay Liar lip liner that I use all the time. Again, another item from my bundle. And then I'm using my go-to, which I actually think might be discontinued. If I can find it, I'll link it. Eva Longoria L'Oreal Paris lipstick. I just eat these, that's how much. I mean, look, all of them look like this, so down to the bone. And then I'm going to set the look with the All Nighter Setting Spray, of course. So guys, that is the final look. Pandora's currently destroying my makeup room, so if you hear a crash or a bang, I'm sorry. But, um, oh, what a meow. <laughs> What? If you have psoriasis or eczema, then I really do feel for you. I hope that some of these little tips and tricks on how to apply makeup on top of it and just having a bit of a chat about it maybe made you feel a bit better. Um, obviously, I'm not a doctor. Obviously, if your skin is really irritating you, then you, you should see a dermatologist or you should see your doctor GP. Um, what I would say is, is Usually I say in my videos if you have any recommendations on products that you think I would like to pop them down below but can I actually ask you not to in this one just because I get so many recommendations on a daily basis on what to use on my skin and I run out and I buy them and they never work. I honestly think it's something that I'm just going to have to live with. I think it will just come in stages as I spoke about in the video. But these are the kind of makeup tips that I do find that even though you guys have seen what's underneath this makeup, you know that how scabby and how red it is under here. I find that these little tips, like the beauty blender, the softer coverage, really do work when you're trying to mask it. So it's something that I'll have to live with, I take it for the rest of my life. Um, it's sore, it's flaky, it's itchy and if you are going through anything similar to me then I really do feel for you because it is such a confidence knocker as well. I hope this video was educational. If you liked it please like, share and subscribe.